So today I want to show you um, some of my tricks and techniques for making really awesome um, fabrics that are totally unique to you using simple tools and it's fun. It's just super rewarding to make your own fabrics. Um, with paint, you don't have to get into dye. And anyway, let me just get into all the supplies that you need. So what I'm going to be talking about specifically today is gelatin plate printing. Now, I generally use an actual plate made out of gelatin. Um, I prefer it to the pre-made ones because, um, because they break down and they disintegrate and they, create, they work in a completely different way from these. They're similar, but very different in that you can't predict what's really going to happen. They start getting cracks and crevices and holes and all kinds of great textures and, te and colors happen when, that, when you get to that. Plus, they're reusable. You can just melt it down in um, the microwave and then let it reform. And so you can keep it going for quite a while. They're really not very... That's um, a really cost-effective way to get into this technique. So, but I didn't have time to make a new plate. So here's a jelly plate. As far as there's a couple different brands, um, as far as I know, they're all equal. So use whatever you can. And um, I do highly suggest that you try an actual gelatin plate at some point. Uh, I'll put the directions in um, the comments below or in the text and let you know. Um, how to make them they're super easy and you can make them any size at one point i made one that was 22 by 44 so it was the whole width of the fabric i did some really cool pieces that way kind of uh crazy to mix up but <laughs> it was really fun to play with so um you need a, a gelatin plate or a jelly plate or whatever the commercial brands are and you need some fabrics. So with fabrics, don't limit yourself. It depends on the technique you want to do. I highly suggest you get a variety of fabrics. When I want a, um, a really clear, crisp print, I use Avalon by Rocklon. It's um, a very tightly woven, 100% cotton. It comes white and natural. And um, it's just, it just gives you really crisp lines because it's so oh, tightly woven. Um, one of my favorites to use is Osnaberg because it's so easy to stitch through. Now the Avalon, because it's tightly woven, it's a little bit harder to hand stitch through. Um, so if you have any arthritis, you may not want to print on the Avalon if you're going to be hand stitching. Machine stitching, it's no problem. And if you don't have arthritis or any hand problems, it's, it's okay to stitch through. But I do like Osnaberg a lot. It's um, kind of oatmeal colored with little flecks it gives you a much softer um, finish to the to the colors it kind of calms everything down a little bit this is cotton duck I print I print on just about everything but remember when you have a more um, thicker fabric or a textured fabric you're you won't get crisp prints so it depends on what, you, what you're looking for this is um, I knew exactly what this was. It's kind of an um, open weave cotton. Almost looks like heavy bandage gauze. And don't forget silk organza. Um, you can also print on poly. One of the nice things about printing is that you can use poly. I've um, A lot of times for classes, I'll buy old sheer curtains. And so we can just go to town printing those. It's a great way to use the polyester fabrics that um, instead of sending them to the landfill where they will still be there thousands of years from now. Um, you can use them in your artwork and um, recycle those, upcycle those. Um, you'll also want some paper. You can use regular paper. I tend to use del uh, deli paper, a little bit thinner. This is just for cleaning up and you can just use regular whatever paper you have around. It doesn't really matter. Um, though I like the deli paper because I get to use it in my collages a little bit. So that's the basic or you need of materials. I throw that on the floor. Um, the other thing that you need to really pay attention to is the paint. When I first started gelatin plate printing, I was so frustrated because I put my paint on, it was too thick, it would soak right through the fabric. If you know, there would be so much paint on the fabric, you couldn't stitch through it, hand or machine. And it, it, I just had all this mess. It was just so frustrating. 
So what I discovered is that um, there really wasn't the ideal paint out there. So I worked with artistic artifacts and we created this fluid acrylic paint, fluid textile paint. So it's designed for fabrics. It will remain, retain a soft hand and it's fluid. And you'll see when, I, um, when you see me demo, I just scored it right on. It's just so easy. You don't have to mix it with anything. If you have a heavier body paint, you need to get some textile medium and then dilute it with that to a pourable consistency. Because when you, if you just use the thicker paints right on your plate, it's just, it's just gonna be a mess. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say other than you're gonna have a mess and you're gonna be so unhappy. So you wanna take regular paint, regular textile paint and dilute it with textile medium. And there's a lot of different brands. Um, and, or you can use a textile fluid acrylic that is at Artistic Artifacts. It's, it's really the easiest. You don't have to mix anything. Um, when I, I found when I was mixing all my paints, I would get the heavier body um, textile paints. You can see that's kind of, you know, it doesn't drip out. It's just pretty thick. And then you would have to mix it with the textile medium, but it wasn't a, the same formula for every color because every color would have a slightly different consistency no matter what paint you were using, um, whether it was an art grade paint or a textile paint or a craft paint, they all have different consistency. You have to get it to the right consistency. So it was very tedious and it was difficult to explain to students why, how, how to mix it because it wasn't, you know, one part and two parts. It was just, well, put some drops in, stir it, see how it works. I had to get a drizzle, drizzle plop. It was very confusing. So anyway, we have these paints now from Artistic Artifacts and they are, of course, my favorite. I helped create them. So if you're going to do some screening, you want some heavier bodied paint as well. You can screen with the fluid acrylics, but you'll get a little softer, not quite as crisp a line. You want the heavier body paints to get the, to get the nice crisp lines. And these are also from textile, uh, sorry, from Artistic Artifacts. Um, and they're, they're great paints. Then you need a couple paint scoopers, mixers. I use popsicle sticks. Uh, I really avoid plastic spoons. They're not good for the environment. And they, um, they get too much paint out. Uh, so like if you're um, trying to scoop some paint out, you always end up with some on the spoon that you can't get out. So popsicle sticks work much better for that. I also use these little spatulas. These are catalyst tools that are made for painting. I use them for spatulas um, and palette knives. They work really well and these are easily reused. I avoid um, one use products whenever I can. The only time is in a classroom situation, I'll use my, the popsicle sticks. You also need um, towels. Um, a, lot, a lot of people use baby wipes. I um, use them on occasion. I use them when I'm filming because I don't have water in my studio. So not yet anyway. So I always keep a stack of towels around so that I can clean. Not that I clean a whole lot, let's be real here, but um, some towels to keep at hand. And I will sometimes have one that's kind of damp, just like you would a baby wipe. Um, but for today's demo, I'll be using a baby wipe and a gel plate instead of what I normally use just to make it easier for the demo. Um, you also want to have um, a print board. Now your print board, I have a print board that I made. It's super easy. It's a piece of plywood, scrap plywood that I just put batting on and stapled. I didn't mess up the mic too much when I hit it with the mic. And then I just use old sheets or fat, any kind of old fabric for, um, doesn't have to be good fabric just to cover it. And I pin that down for when I'm screening or stamping. Now my whole table is a print table. I did that. It's also an ironing table, which makes it super handy in the studio. Um, and these can get kind of fun, these, uh, these fabrics, because you're just, they're just soaking up extra paint. And sometimes they become interesting art pieces all in their own. Uh, the other option is to use these foam stamp pads. There's nothing wrong with this. They're easily, you know, especially if space is a problem, these are inexpensive and you can get them at uh, Michael's or any craft store and they're great to use for stamping and screening. You need to have a soft surface for both of those techniques. 
Um, so then I'm going to talk about the junk. So I found that when I'm doing gelatin plate printing, I like to use stuff that's just found it around me, just junk. I, I, I have used stencils and I have used texture plates, but I find that I'm just not quite satisfied with how they look. Probably it's a little bit of the, I want my work to be different, stuff that I'm using in a completely different way. So I use packaging material. This came with some pens. This is an old meat mallet I found. It's got some great patterns. This is a cooling coil for a computer. I can get these all the time. My husband's a computer geek. Tops to anything. Tops are great. This is nuts. Packing material is always good. Old. This is a potato masher. Has some fun lines. Just tubes. This is a coaster, believe it or not, from, I think, from Ikea. I usually put a little piece of tape on the back to hold it. This is a um, sink mat from Target. It's got their circles. So, as you can see, I just have a lot of junk placemats. Um, I, I have to admit, I have multiple boxes of these, this junk, but that's because I teach, you know, so I have to have a wide variety of stuff. Um, sports bottles. They make the best because they have their own little handle right there. Um, so there's just all kinds of things you can use. Just weird sponges and this, more computer parts. This is a, makes really cute flowers. It's a fan from a computer thing. So um, just junk, trash, cardboard. I'll use a lot of packing material. Um, it's not going anywhere, so especially the stuff that's not recycled, I might as well put, give it at least one more use. So, um, sorry, you won't be able to throw things away. Just even things like this is fun. It's just a kind of a plasticized paper grid. Came in some toy, like a game, and we poked out the pieces, and then I was like, oh, that would be awesome. Um, but a lot of my favorites are the simplest, cardboard. I'll be using these in the demo, so you can see just packing material. Can't throw anything away anymore, um, but it always puts it to second use. And then your work is very different. Nobody can repeat exactly what you did. Um, I also love to use wood blocks. These are hand carved in India and they are sold by Artistic Artifacts. As you can see, I have quite the collection and this isn't even all my collection. They're quite addictive. The other nice thing about the wood blocks is that they are, um, the company that Artistic Artifacts works with to purchase them from India, they are um, out of work carpenters are the carvers. So instead of the carvers leaving their villages to go to the big city to find work, the company comes out to the small villages and assigns the carver, the out of work carpenters, the jobs of what to carve, and then comes back and picks them up. So they get to stay with their family, they get to earn a, an income, and so it's kind of a a lovely win-win situation and they're all slightly different you can see mine are well used well um, when you teach you know you can never clean them up right away but um, I love them looking all grungy anyway so they're just even if they're the exact same pattern they're always a little bit different because of the hand carving so I love using these wood blocks wood printing blocks and then we're gonna do some Thermofax screening. So these are Thermofax screens. Sorry, I didn't take them out of the package. Um, I have all different motifs. A lot of different people make them. A Thermofax machine is old school technology from the 60s and 70s. It's how they um, did mimeograph masters for, uh, for schools, for printing and businesses too. They're kind of hard to find nowadays because the, um, uh, Tattoo artists love them because they, they make a screen that can mold to the body. So they love to use it to put down their patterns. So Thermofax screens, it's a screen printing process, so, but it doesn't have the bulky wooden frames and it's a little easier. It uses this special machine to burn the screens instead of um, a photo emulsion screen like with um, regular screen printing. So there's all kinds of motifs. There's just background motifs. There's um, leaves and words and imagery, all kinds of things that you can use. And along with that, you need a couple gift cards, expired or 
um, hotel room keys or anything that you can find, these hard plastic key, um, things. That's what we, we use for a squeegee because they're small. You want to use these instead of the a, a traditional squeegee that you would use in screen printing because those are much larger. Um, oh, and a brayer. Oops. My brayer was over there. So, a brayer, mine are always very grungy. Um, I always like to have a couple so that if I want to change my paint color, I can do that without stopping and cleaning off my brayer. Um, we've already had that discussion. I don't like to clean things. Um, I think that is it for supplies that you need. A little water container. If you have water around you, that's the best. Plastic on your table. And I, the, I think the most important thing when you're doing gelatin plate printing is to do it for the entire day. Don't just pull out your plate and do it for a couple hours and then stop. Because I found that if you do it for the whole day, by the end of the day, you will get so much more experimental and get so much more interesting results because you're tired, you're like trying, you're just, you're just freer. By the time you get into the flow and then you're like, oh, well, this piece is so ugly, I can experiment on it because I can't make it any worse. And that's what I do in my classes. After lunch, everybody has to get the piece that they don't like the most and they have to turn it into something that they love. And it's amazing when you add layers and layers and layers and screen printing and block printing and more layers of pattern on top, you can create some amazing fabrics that are fun to do, not, not particularly messy, as you'll see when I, when I did the demo, um, that it's, it's just something that will be unique to you. So I really hope you'll take some of these tips and have a play all day, not just for an hour. All right, so I've got my paint, I've got some water, some baby wipes, like I said, I don't normally use baby wipes, but I don't have water up in my studio. Um, and I have a gel plate. So what I'm gonna do first is just show you how I mix the paints on the gel plate itself. I'm gonna take two paints, and like I said, you just don't have to use very much paint. That's it, that's the number one um, mistake that people make when they're using textiles. I'm going to do one of my favorite combinations of yellow, a little black, if I can get I'll test this bottle first. Maybe we'll go, oh, there we go, black, yellow. And this is how I mix it right on the plate. I know most people don't like yellow and black. It's kind of grungy, but one of my favorites together. That black was a little thick. Should have tested it before I did this, but all right. You can see I just got my finger in there. So you can see I really did not use hardly any paint at all. And I can just print this as it is. I'll do that just so you can see how it absorbs. Now I'm using the Avalon cotton. When you want a real, want more crisp images, you want to make sure you use a really tightly woven cotton fabric. So there you can see I've got my, just my, my base color there. Such a yummy color. So now I don't, if I want to change colors, I don't change, I don't clean my plate. I know a lot of people would cringe at that, but that's just the way I've, um, it's just the way I work. Happy accidents, I'm, I love happy accidents, which is why I, I don't worry about controlling the color so much and mixing it on the plate. I think that's just fun. So now that I've shown you just how I mix it, um, I wanna show you a little piece of paint in there. Um, just some of the tools that I use. I tend not to use anything very fancy. Um, let me work first with this wood block. So when I'm working with wood blocks, I tend to have another piece of fabric or a piece of paper right next to it that I'm stamping off onto because you don't wanna, I don't like to waste paint. And I can use these things for all kinds of different collages and 
just doing a kind of a simple repeat pattern here with this. I actually, when I'm doing woodblock printing just straight up, I usually get my, um, not using it on jelly plate, I tend to just use it, I get my jelly plate out to carry the paint so I can get a much more controlled print that way. See the fabric I'm using has some stains on it. What better thing to do with stained fabric than to print it up? I just kind of pat it and rub it. Make sure that all the paint is absorbed nicely. And then I get this really lovely print. I just love this stamp. It's one of my favorites. Um, to, and when you have your um, wood blocks, think about repeat patterns like this. Now, I can come back in with the, in here with different colors. I can make it a little bit more intense. I tend to like these to be more muted. If I want more intense color, I will overprint, um, like I could do on this one. I did previously. Let me come back in with some more yellow, a bit more black. Oops, that's a lot more black. Pick some of that out. A little black goes a long way. And then let's add in a tiny bit of turquoise. See what fun color we get there. I'm just do a lot of experimenting. I, I, I'm not about making repeatable colors. It's not important to me. So you can put your paint on a bit thicker, but you have to know that if it, if it gets too thick, you're just going to end up with fabric you can't use. It's just going to be a muddy mess. So I'm just going to print this kind of over and then to the side so you can see the difference. Here I didn't mix the paint quite as much. This got much darker. And then this is still lighter, but it's kind of the same colors with that little addition of that turquoise in there. And I could come back in and just throw down some turquoise all by itself. There's still paint on here. Turquoise does not want to. I thought I dusted all these. And quite often I'll come in, I learned this trick living in Colorado, is just to add a little bit more moisture to it with a water bottle. Because if you, are li if you live in a dry place, see how it's coming through here? That's because of the water. If it's becoming coming through because of the amount of paint you have on, that's a sure sign that you have too much paint. But this I can tell because how speckled it is that it's because of the water. So there I've got this yummy color on top. I might do a little bit more of that over here. It's kind of fun. Um, it actually reminds me of a table my son just bought for his apartment. Just again, still mixing. I've got some old yellow, some grunge on here. Um, some people really like to be able to repeat things. I don't really care. It's not that important for the type of work I do. So just always remember that if, if your plate is drying out faster than you want, you can add a little bit of water, but you don't want to add too much. So here I started with that yellow green and then added this. So I've got two layers of color on there. Now that's a really exciting color to me. And on this one, it's much darker, but what if we come back in with a little bit of yellow orange? So it, it really is, I'm spending all my time playing with these colors. I'm not, it's, it's just, you kind of learn what things that you like after a while, but I just really like to experiment and play and not try and control it so much. And I went off to the side, so get a little before and after. I'll put a little in there, big black spot. Oh, I'm picking up paint from my palette. That happens to me all the time. Now you can see here, I've got this, this other color coming in here and that's quite, makes this piece a little bit more interesting. Um, I can come back in and do the whole thing, but I wanted you to see how this, how much more interesting this side is than just this side. And then this side is also quite interesting. So don't be afraid to overprint your layers. 
Um, sometimes I'll, I don't usually come in with a contrasting color. Usually it's something on the same um, analogous line, but you could. We could see what happens. Let me throw down a little magenta. So I only tested one of these. I'm going to mix it with my same dirty brayer. I know some people are cringing. Like, ah! But that's how I get interesting things. You can see I didn't have a very big piece of fabric here. So that's pretty interesting too. This magenta had some little flecks that came out. I hope you can see that. That's some pretty interesting stuff. So you could you can just build up layers of plain color with no pattern and get really interesting deep kind of grungy fabrics. Um, you can also get fabrics that aren't grungy, um, which some of the ones I showed you earlier were a little less grungy. But I guess I'm in a kind of a grunge phase. I like things I'm being in the Pacific Northwest now, I'm kind of really enjoying things that are a little bit more muted in color. All right, so we did the wood blocks and we did just the plain printing. And um, I want to next show you how to do a Thermofax um, screen. I'm gonna put this aside to dry. Here's a piece that I did earlier. I'm gonna move my jelly plate out of the way. Now remember, I'm working on a padded table, so you want to have some sort of padding on your table or your print surface. It could be a, plastic, a foam mat, or it could you can make yourself a print table. And if you're you know if you're doing something very specific, you'll want to um, pin your fabric and make sure it's all straight. But I'm just kind of fooling around today. So um, so these fabrics are um, ones that I dyed this fabric. One that I dyed, it's kind of eh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just kind of eh. So earlier I had mixed up some gray and it's kind of a lumpy gray, but we'll see how that goes. I have a couple screens. Now, when you're working with screens, if you've worked with um, stencils, you know you have to pay attention to what is the positive and the negative. So this one here has just very fine lines uh, and I'll Show you that one. Let me put my card here. I'm gonna pull it, pull out some paint. Kind of seized even more over while I was mixed it a few days ago, and it's been really hot. So we'll see how it works. Like I said, um, paint that has gotten kind of clumpy or super thick that works really well for Thermofax screen printing. You don't want paint that's too. Um, too runny or your design will be smooshy. Now, if you want a smooshy design, that's okay too. Oh, I love that. That's look, it's really great. It's a little bit double printed here where I um, moved the screen accidentally, but you know, I don't mind that too much. One of the things I like to do with screens, screen printing, is change their direction and print over print. So I'll show you what I mean on this one. Put it here. I've turned it 90 degrees. I recently did a whole piece of fabric that was all kinds of crazy angles with this. I'll have to put a picture up for you guys. So you can see how here it's got much more interest where the two screens overlap. Um, I think that's really, really exciting fabric. Um, and I use gray a lot more now than I used to. I used to tend towards black and white. Um, but I don't know, I've just kind of started using gray. The other thing I want to show you is you can mix and you, can, you know, like all rules are made to be broken. So I'm going to take some of the white, did not check this one. And this is the fluid. But I'm going to put it on here because I've got some other paint on here already. So I'm just going to put the white on here. And so they can, you can mix colors on the screen as you go. Put a little bit of this. You can you can mix your fluids with the heavier bodied fab paints, and and it will still work just fine. You don't want to have all fluid paint. 
So this one is just a little tiny bit lighter. The lines are a little bit tiny lighter. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but they're just a little bit lighter. And I could come in here with, um, the heck, let's go for it. Let me go over here where there's this little bit of yellow. I can come in with some yellow orange across the top. I still have paint on my card. So here I've got this more goldy um, yellow green color coming in. It's very funky. It's kind of almost bronze on top. So play with your colors, play with mixing. Um, if you don't like it, you can always over dye it or Turn, make it into small pieces and stitch on it. No one will ever know. But this is one of the things that I just love to do. And then when you're done, put it straight into your water so that it doesn't dry. If the paint dries on your screen, you're going to um, have a mess. Uh, I just wanted to show you a couple other types of screens. This one would be kind of funky in this paint I have on here. I'm just going to use the paint that's already on here. Um, this one is macaroni. And it's got a bigger design motif. And something like this, I'm not going to change the direction that I'm printing it because it, it'll look a little too complicated. It's a little more clunky. But I definitely wanted to show you this one, which is what I was talking earlier about the opposite. Um, so this screen is. Um, I forget what it's called. Sorry, it's paper, but it's very dark. So there's just little holes that will poke, th poke through. So you're not printing the background, you're printing the parts that are burnt out. And so I wanted you to see the difference. One takes a lot more paint because it's got a much denser area that you're printing Get the whole thing. But you can see how, how heavy it is. So you're only going to have little bits of the background showing through. So when you're looking at screens to purchase, make sure that you think that negative positive. And this will still be fine once the paint, even though there's a lot of paint on it, once it's dried and washed, it will it'll be quite soft and usable. Um, if you ever get too much paint on a pr th something you've printed, one of the things I'll do is come back in with another piece of fabric and just lay it down on top. You can actually squeegee it if you want, but that'll pull up some of the paint. There wasn't a whole lot extra on there, especially on this side, but um, so it's reduced the amount of paint even more and you kind of get a little second print. This one section looks like it has too much paint. Um, so I hope that helps when you're looking at Thermofax designs to print, to print. All right, so I realized that I didn't show you how I use, I'm so excited about screen printing. I didn't show you how I use the my favorite tools for getting patterns. All right, um, let's go with something a little bit brighter here. Let's put on a whole bunch of magenta. When you put your paint on, even if it's just one color, well, I have multiple colors on here, so it's gonna be kind of grungy. Um, you want to be able to see through the plate to the back. I, can, I can't see exactly through, but you can still see the paint that's on the other side. Um, this is some of my favorite things to use are junk. And I'm not going to go into all the different types of junk that I use, but um, where did I put my piece of fabric? Um, some of the simplest things yield the best results. Just a piece of cardboard making these great lines two different directions. Get a grid. 
you know me, you know I love my grids. That right here. That's super yummy. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can come back in with this. Well, let me just show you. Let me take a little bit of orange, this yellow orange. Then I can come back in and overprint, and it'll fill in those white lines with more of the yellow orange. Usually I wait till it dries to do that, but um, it dries so fast. You can see it. now I've got this two shades of color coming through, um, and it didn't disrupt my white lines from the first print. So that is really a fun thing to play with. I hope you can see that really well um and one of my new ones that i have this is just chunk or i could do this all day but i won't it's got a little clumpy some of my paints got a little clumpy when i moved and moving truck and heat actually it was cold um then of course we had really crazy weather here um, so this is just packing trash. Um, I used it before and it turned out to be one of my favorite patterns. Putting it in there, lining them up. So you can spend a lot of money on stencils and cool things, but if you want stuff that's really just yours, um, look at the trash. You can find all kinds of crazy things. I've used bones, I've used bamboo skew, it just combs old parts from computers. Look at those cool lines there. That yummy pink magenta. So, let's put up to I just think they're, I love the subtlety of it. And then when you're coming in to do um, stitching on top, it gives you places to start to think about where you might want to go. Um, and when I'm cleaning my plate, as you can probably tell, I don't spend a lot of time cleaning my plate. I will just come in, spritz it with some water, and get a piece of jelly paper, clean it off. And of course I use that in something. Nothing goes to waste. Don't like to waste paint. I don't know, this is the way I grew up. You don't waste paint, you don't waste your supplies. Um, I like to use everything, and especially you don't waste water, so I really don't spend a lot of time cleaning things. Um, never was in my blood to make sure everything was pristine. Probably, some of you are probably cringing, but um, that's just the way I'm wired. Put a little bit more in here. So you can see it's bringing up some of the pink plus some of the previous layers. And I'll just keep doing that. You don't have to watch me do this. This is kind of boring. But um, I hope that gives you some ideas for how to work with fabric when you're um, printing with your gelatin plate. The paint is super important. And you want something that's fluid, but not too, um, not too thick or else you have to kind of play that game of mixing it all 